What's up guys, TC here, and welcome back to Starbound Tips, and I have uh, been packing up, and I want to get one more video in before I pack up my computer for this move, and so uh, today's video is going to be about the top five Starbound pets, and so this is obviously going to be a uh, subjective thing, a very opinionated thing, it's not objective, it is not a 100% uh, truth, or 100%, this is just what I think the best pets are, and I would love to hear what you think the best pets are, if you agree or disagree, uh, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, so I want to briefly... Uh, preface this with uh, the way pets work in their leveling in Starbound is a lot different now than it used to be if you don't know. Uh, it used to be that you would capture pets on certain planets and their level was dependent on the planet you caught them on. Nowadays it's completely different. Uh, you let pets no longer level up, nothing like that. A pet's strength is entirely dependent on the armor you're wearing. So if you have on high tier armor, your pet's going to be high tier. If you have low tier armor, your pet's going to be weaker. Uh, and the same thing if you have like uh, if you have a very defensive armor set, your pet is going to be more defensively built. Like, they're going to have more defense than attack or whatever. So if you have a really offensive set, they're going to have more attack, etc. So that's kind of how that works. So we are going to dive right into things. At number five, I have chosen the Nutmidge. Now, this is, for some of you, this might seem a little bit alarming or weird, but I have a really good reason. This is actually something really cool. So for those of you who don't know, the Nutmidge is actually this little guy here. He walks around, and he's actually comprised of three little bitty, um, I think they're called not midgelings, maybe? Midgelings is what they're called. And they all three combine together to make this guy here. And so this, the way I would use this pet in particular is if you're in an area where you have a bunch of little minions you're dealing with, or like a, a good example is the, uh, the floor and hunting party, the spider boss. He's always spawning in those little babies. This is a perfect pet to pull in. Because what happens here is I have attached the firebomb collar onto this guy. And the firebomb collar, essentially whenever you, your pet dies, it, uh, a big fire explosion goes off and does a lot of damage to whatever killed it. Now the cool thing is that these nut midglings, or the king nut midge, or whatever this is called, which you can capture on lush planets, by the way, the very first planet you get, is whenever he dies, an explosion goes off, but he actually spawns three little babies. And each one of those babies will attack monsters, and when they die, they'll explode too. So this is really cool because it essentially allows you to handle a whole bunch of uh, NPCs and enemies. Um, it's really a good distraction because there's so many of them and they handle a lot of fights. So we're actually going to spawn in a couple guys here. Um, let's see. Uh, let's put them a little bit stronger though. So we've got four guys here. And you can see he's going to immediately engage. And yes, you can see he's already distracting him quite well. And he, he's going to get his ass kicked here pretty soon, I think. Yeah, so he just blew up there. But now he's got his three little buddies. And they've all attacked him. As you can see, he's actually set most of them on fire. And let's see if this guy can get him. Come on, buddy. You can do it. Get him. Get him. Oh yeah, he got him. And he actually lived. And this is actually a, an important note. I'm actually glad he didn't kill the last one. Is that when they break down into this form here, you can recall him. And, and when you recall him, he doesn't he doesn't return in this form here. So if I recall him, he'll still be like this. If you want to get him back to his final form like this, you have to go to a, a, het, a pet healing station like this and uh, heal him really quick. So I'm going to do this. And I'm going to kill this guy really quick. Hey, back off, dude. There we go. Had to get rid of those guys. So, moving on. Alright, and at number four, I have chosen the Adult Pop Top. Now, uh, this is actually an interesting set here because uh, there's something I've always hated is whenever you're trying to like break into a stronghold or a castle, there's inevitably, inevitably a point where you try to get in and there's a whole bunch of NPCs on one side and they're all shooting at you and you don't have any cover. And it makes it really difficult to kind of push in. Uh, you have to do a lot of like hit and run tactics, kind of shoot a couple and then back up and heal, shoot a couple back up and heal. And so this guy is actually a really good solution to that. So you spawn him in, as you can see, he's really big. He has a really big hitbox. He has a ton of health too. And so what I've done is I've slapped a healing three collar on him. And so now he functions as a like a meat shield that kind of comes along with you. He's extremely slow, um, so he's not really good like that. But what you do is if there's a whole bunch of guys over here, you essentially throw him and uh, spawn him in front of you. And he becomes a giant meat shield for you. So a perfect example is right here. We're going to spawn in a couple of, uh, let's see, cultists here. So we're going to spawn in several here. And you're going to see they're going to start shooting. And I'm not going to get hit. So I'm going to be able to hang back here while he takes all the damage for me. And he can also kind of take part in kind of killing them. But essentially, you hang behind him. He's got such a big hitbox and so much, uh, so much health. Nothing's going to kill him. And you can hang back behind him while he sponges all the damage for you. And so I've went ahead and gone with the, uh, the healing three collar. Because uh, there are like there are health boost collars you can put on that just boost the total health he has, but I think the healing one is overall better. Because for the most part, they're not going to be able to kill him, and if he gets really close to them, he'll actually kill them himself. So a uh, very good pet, very situational, but it's in situations like that that it's really really hard to kind of break into some strongholds, and he really does a good job. 
For number three on our countdown, I have chosen the Lumoth. So for you, those of you who know, the Lumoth is this little floaty guy here. You can find him in the uh, Steam Spring biomes. He floats around. Uh, and this is actually this is more of a utility uh, utility exploration type pet, not designed for combat in the role I've set up for him. So I've actually put an Oblivious Collar on him, and I'm going to explain that right now. So there's three things about this guy that make him really, really good for exploration as utility. First is that he flies, which obviously makes him really easy to keep up with you. He doesn't have to worry about terrain. Second of all, he glows on his own. So you really can't see here, but I'll show you in a second. He has his own glow he gives off. like He's a really good light source to keep around, so it's perfect for exploration. And going on to the third bit is he's actually intangible. So he, what that means is he can phase through blocks. And you might see here, yeah, he just kind of flies through stuff. And uh, yeah, it's actually really, really great. And it makes it perfect for him to kind of be a good pet to uh, lead around in caving. And this is even more important as of 1.0 because we now have, uh, not everyone's going to be wearing the Lantern on Stick and Halogen Pack backpack because now there's a lot of cool augments you can put on like speed boost and jump boost and attack boost and stuff like that. So not everyone's going to have a Lantern on Stick, so other lighting methods are going to be really valuable. So I'm going to hop down here and show you guys really quickly uh, the real, like just how good he is to have in a cave. And so you can see, because he's intangible, it doesn't matter kind of where you go, you'll never lose him. Like he'll, he'll just float right through the blocks and you can see he's a really good light source as well. And you don't have to waste any uh, collars on him. Like, there's a glowing collar, but you don't have to waste it on him. Now, the only bad side about this guy is that he has very, very low health and very, very low attack. So, we've remedied that by adding the Oblivious Collar. And what this does is this basically makes him passive, but also makes him immune to damage. So, monsters can't injure him. He won't get in fights. And that was one of the biggest, like, the worst things about playing with this guy is that if you don't have this collar on, he's so weak, he'll float around, but he'll inevitably get in a fight with another monster, and he'll uh, basically get his ass kicked, and he'll be no use to you. So with this Oblivious Collar, he actually is a perfect little exploration pet. He'll stay near you, you can't lose him because he can face through blocks. Yeah, you can kind of run away really quick, but you can see he always makes his way back to you, and he's really, really good glowing source. Like, I have no light on right now, I have no backpack or flashlight, and he keeps everything really well lit up. So, anyways, moving on. At number two on the countdown, I have chosen uh, the. It's actually kind of an interesting one. The randomly generated large flying monsters in this game are actually really cool. Now, uh, for a while there, I thought these these randomly generated monsters, uh, the large flying ones, actually weren't in the game anymore. But it turns out they actually are. You just don't see them very much because they're in a very very particular spot. So if you want to find them, you've got to go to any kind of planet. You've got to pillar up really high into the atmosphere and look around, and you'll see these guys very rarely. And they are randomly generated. So I actually have two here. Uh, these are both randomly generated. And what's cool about them is that they have their own unique attacks about them. Each one is randomly built, and they have a random attack. So like this one here, we're going to spawn in a cultist. And you'll see he they do a swoop attack, and this one also has a this little like green blade thing. And we also have this guy here, which this one I think shoots a um, some kind of laser. So he's got that, and he's got this really cool, yeah, this really devastating like, laser blast he does. And there's all kinds of cool attacks. Some of them shoot blood, some of them shoot rainbows, they shoot this like ultrasonic attacks. Some of them have, like, they shoot out these, like, sonic waves around them. Uh, super cool. And again, these guys, um, like, these guys are a little bit different than, like, the Nutmidge and the Adult Pop Top. As these two were, like, situational, this guy is just a general purpose pet to have. So, if you're just out exploring, you're gonna want this guy around. He's just kinda like a guard dog. He's flying, he's got good health, he's got a good attack, and he can just kinda cover your back. And, um, what's really cool is there's a lot of diversity on these guys. Uh, it, when you pillar up, you'll each planet only has one type. You'll find like several of them, but you, they're only gonna be one type. So if we pillar up, and on this planet I find this guy, I'm only gonna find this variant. So if I want, if I if I didn't like it, I would have to go to another planet, pillar up, and find more. So that's kind of how you find uh, different varieties with different attacks. But yeah, they're just really really good general purpose pets. Uh, they basically just kind of float around behind you, cover your back, acts a good little do uh, guard dog. And I use the uh, the healing collar just because the healing only works when they're not in their ball and for a general purpose pet that you want out all the time it's actually kind of beneficial that they're out of their ball and healing when they're not in combat so moving on and finally coming in at number one on the countdown is the pull pin now I know this is probably gonna come as a surprise to a lot of people um, and trust me it came to a surprise for me too these guys are unbelievably strong they absolutely wreck shop um, it, it's it's just ridiculous the amount of damage they can do so what I've done here is I've actually uh, I've put a damage three collar on him as well to further exacerbate his strengths and this is the kind of guy essentially uh, if you don't know about these guys they these little squid looking thing they crawl around really slow but they have this little bubble beam attack where they just shoot this like stream of bubbles 
and it absolutely destroys everything. So uh, I'm going to use an example here. Uh, we're going to call in a pop top. Let's see. And so we're going to do a level 7 pop top. Now, for you, those of you who don't know about levels, each planet is tiered based on a, a level. So like in game, the, the, and the levels are tied to armor as well. So like the highest armor level you're going to find is tier 6. So um, tier 6 is the absolute in game armor. And to that same regard, they are Tier 6 planets where you find the really strong monsters. And so Tier 6 is the strongest monster you're going to find in the game. So we're going to spawn in a Tier 7 adult pop top, something you would never find in the wild. And we're going to let, let you see what this, uh, what this little pull pin does. Spawn him in, drop him on the ground, and he does this bubble beam attack, and he almost destroyed this guy in, in one blow. Look at that. He told the pop top on no uncertain terms to get fucked. And look, it hardly did any damage to him either. Look, he still has plenty of health. And he's just got this bubble, this stream of bubbles, and it is so freaking strong. I don't know what it is, uh, what it is about it, why it's so strong, but I know that he absolutely just destroys stuff. Look. Look at this. He doesn't care. He's so unbelievably strong. And then the the, the damage three collar on there uh, just makes him even more overpowered. Uh, so I definitely recommend catching him. You can find them on, like, underground in ice biomes. They stick to the ceiling, and they are really dangerous to catch. Um... I've actually died to these several times in my Let's Plays, or at least almost died. And uh, my recommendation for these is, again, this is situational, so I wouldn't have these out all the time. If you're looking for a general purpose pet, I would go with the uh, one of the large flying. But if you go into a boss room with a big, uh, any kind of any kind of boss or really, really tanky, strong enemy, uh, I would definitely recommend this pull pin with damage 3 on it. Just pop him on the ground and let him just wreck shop. He's a very, very powerful monster. So, that's going to wrap up today's episode, guys. Uh, again... Uh, let me know what you think. If you have uh, any suggestions of what pets you like, let me know if your pet made the uh, countdown or whatever, and let me know any suggestions. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Please rate, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll talk to you all later.